giving God the glory worldwide. You're watching the Gospel America Network. I want to share with you, yet not I, but the Lord is delivered from the death decree. Repeat it with me. Delivered, delivered. from the death decree. decree. Alright. Why would I say that? Delivered from the death decree. We read in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, we already know that when we disobey God, we are on a death sentence. We have, I mean, you might as well go on and be on death row because you've got a death sentence waiting on you. But that does not have to be your destiny, as I said earlier. That don't have to be your destiny because God has stepped in. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that the world by Him might be what? Saved. All right. So we're saved. Saved from what? Just death? No, we're saved from the, the ravages of this world. God has already ensured us and through His Word uh, that we are going to have an abundant life. That means down here. That don't mean just up there. Abun you don't, abundant. When you get to heaven, there's going to be more than abundance in heaven. When Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, first you're going to live, and that you might have life doesn't mean poor health. But it means that when I say that you might have life and have it more abundantly, it means that you're going to have a good life and a, a prosperous, abundant life. Amen. Amen. Now, prosperous doesn't just mean money. Mm. Prosperous means that first you have salvation. Secondly, you have excellent health. And thirdly, you have favor. Somebody say favor. favor. I may not have all the money in the world, but I got some favor. Amen. I walk under the anointing. I walk in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Somebody better say amen up in here. I got favor. Amen. Praise God. I go down on Wall Street in D.C. I mean in D.C. In Washington, D.C. I mean in New York. Where am I getting D.C. from? In, in New York. I go down there and favor starts to follow yes. Yes. the servant of the Lord. Amen. They don't even know me, but all of a sudden somebody has to say, it's something about him. I just want to talk to him for a minute. Mm -hmm. When I met you, I didn't know you, you didn't know me, but something said, let's just connect. Yes. What is that favor? Yes. yes. I met Baby Bird over here, and she joined our team. And when, when, when Lauren came to join our team, God just, just connected. And I called my wife Tweety Bird, but I called her Baby Bird. <laughs> I give people nicknames. And there's a connection. Dallas, same thing. We just hooked up and started talking. The Holy Ghost has a way of connecting people together. Yes, man. Yes, it does. And when that happens, we operate in the favor of the Lord. Amen. Well, I want to talk about this being delivered from the death decree. First of all, we know for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Now, Let's take an example in the Bible. Let me just act like an old college professor for a moment. And let's examine a situation in Scripture. We find that uh, there was a man by the name of Moses. Y'all, everybody heard of Moses, right? Amen. It's pretty sad if you don't know who Moses was. But before Moses became a grown man, he was a little baby. Yes. And the word was out that there would be a deliverer of Israel who would deliver the Israelites out of bondage. 
Of course, Pharaoh wasn't having that. Come on now. Pharaoh got afraid. Fear will always cause people to do dumb stuff. Pharaoh put out a death decree and he wanted these babies to be killed. He thought that if he killed all the little babies, he would get rid of the prophecy that was spoken that the Israelites would be delivered from bondage. And so now, these little babies are killed. Families are mourning the death of their two-year-old babies. Yes. All because the devil got in Pharaoh and projected a spirit of fear so that Pharaoh would kill the babies. Trying to kill the promise of God. The devil is still trying to kill the promise of God in our lives today. When Paul went about preaching the gospel, the Bible says that there were certain vagabond Jews who heard about what Paul did. And they saw a man possessed with devils and they said to the men that were possessed with devils, we adjure thee by Jesus whom Paul preached, come out. Hmm. Hmm. Everybody know that story, don't they? Amen. What did the devil say? Jesus we know. Yes. And Paul we know. Who are you? The devil said, okay. They came out all right and jumped in those men. Had them going down the street naked and acting like a fool. The devil will make you act like a fool when you ain't connected Amen. with God. Amen. And when he gets through having you act like a fool, then he'll kill you. He'll play with you for a while, but when he gets tired, when he gets bored, He'll Amen. toss you like yesterday's garbage and then get somebody else. Hello. Amen. Hey, Ms. Linda and Darnell. My neighbor, next door neighbors, they here. Amen. Praise God. Boy, I tell you, the house is good. Give me a good, good, good shot of them, the, the folk in the house. I might not get this house this packed up for a long time. Get some of that shot. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'd rather for y'all to come now than to come to my funeral and show up. Gee. Amen. 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 Come on. Now. Well, they were stretched out out there. And, House is full now. Been preaching for 25 years up in here, and nobody hardly show up, but they, they came today. So at least I can say, thank God, they came to, to, to be a blessing today. I love this. This is, the house is full. We even got that one, two, three, three empty seats left. Praise God. That's wonderful. I thank God for that. Thank y'all so much for coming. But anyway, let me get back to this. When Pharaoh put out that decree to kill these babies. That's not the only decree that went out. There was another death sentence that went out too, wasn't it? Amen. What about Jesus when he was born? Yeah. Our Lord and Savior. Herod had a problem, didn't he? Yeah. This ain't Christmas, but I'll tell a little bit of the story because it connects to what I'm talking about. It was prophetically foretold that there would be a king that was going to be coming. He would be known as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Herod heard about this baby that was going to be born. And the Bible says that he and the entire city was troubled. They were exceedingly afraid of this good news about this little baby that was being born. So what did Herod do? He put out a decree. Kill the babies! Two years and under. Here we go again. Poor two-year-olds. Kill them. That way I know I'll stop the prophecy from coming. Didn't work, did it? No. The Bible said that Mary and Joseph were being warned of the Lord. And so they fled. And they, 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 they went to Bethlehem of Judea. And when the baby was born, the Bible says a bright star shined in heaven. The wise men, how many were they? No one. <laughs> how you know it was three? That's, just a, that's a Bible trivia question. That's, see, that's why you got to study your Bible. Because they said they brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Like a king, nobody else be there but just those, those guys that had those gifts. The wise men came. I don't know how many it was. It doesn't say. 
But they came to worship Him. And being warned of God, the Bible says they were told to go home a different way. Mm -hmm. Because Herod had a problem. Herod told the wise men, when you find him, bring me word so that I can come and worship him too. He lied. He wanted to find out where Jesus was so he could send his soldiers to kill him. There was a death decree made on the life of Jesus. Can I put it in today's terminology? Somebody put a contract out on his life. Amen. Now some of you might not understand this, but in my old young wild days, I was an assassin. Oops. A sniper. Call it whatever you want. That's what I used to do. I'm not proud of all of it, but I, that's where I came from. I came, I was delivered from a world of violence in a war zone. And they told me, You're a great take shot. You know, the enemy would come. I'd lay in wait, have to look like, I'd look like a tree. That was my job. Later, after being in the jungles for a year, they sent me to Washington, D.C. And had the nerve to ask if I wanted to work with the President of the United States. I said, I thought we already worked for the President of the United States. <laughs> they said, mm, well, not that way. We mean really work for the President. I said, how do you do that? They said, we want you to be part of the President's security detail. We heard about your shooting record. You know, when you're in the military, your record follows you. And they needed somebody with a sniper background. And so I said, sure, I don't care. And I took that job for about a year and a half, and then after that I left. And I said, well, I don't think I'm going to be a hit man. I think I'll go find another, I can, another profession. So I went into broadcasting. That's how that started. But that's why I wear my little presidential seal everywhere I go, because that's, that's something that's part of my history. That's part of what God allowed me to experience. But... Sometimes people put a contract out, whether it's the president or some other head of state, there's a, there's a death decree that's been made. Well, I got news for y'all. A contract has been put out on every one of your lives by the devil. Oh, y'all better say something to me. Amen. Satan already has told all his little imps and little demons. He said, I want you to kill them. I want you to make them sick. I want you to take away their finances. I want you to take away their health. And then when you get through playing around with them, then I want you to destroy them. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his job. There's a hit out on us. There's a satanic contract out on you because the devil knows who you are. The moment you made up your mind that you said, I'm going to serve God. The moment you made up your mind, I said, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to give God some, some time. And when you go on your job and you start talking to folk and trying to be nice to folk, you know the devil's right there too. Y'all you, you know about it at the VA. Amen. <laughs> hey, hello. <laughs> Praise God. We went in eight dollars that many a time. Neil, her toe, all of y'all, baby bird, all y'all know it. I come up in there, well, praise God. Hey, how y'all doing? And here come the devil. Mm, it's for TV. You don't do nothing. <laughs> praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the devil hates it when you're standing and doing something for the Lord. The devil hates it when you're smiling and you're full of joy. Say, I come to work. What you see, how y'all see me at work? This, this is how I am. I ain't changing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I don't live one way in church and then live another way on the job. Devil is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. So the devil, when I walk, when I come to work, the demon is just mad at me. Yeah. Praise God. I say, he put a big old target on my back. Yeah, take him out. <laughs> 
I said, go ahead, devil. But I got news for you. I hold up the shield of faith, put on the whole armor of God, and I take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and I start swinging that thing, and I start praising God. I start singing my songs of worship, and that demon goes, oh, don't do that. Yeah, the demon told me, he lied on me. I'm supposed to walk around with a long face and have a bad attitude because that demon lied on me. No, I realize that there's a hit on me. I realize there's a contract out. I realize that the devil wants to take me out and he wants to take you out. But I'm determined, hallelujah, that my God is my keeper. My God is my protector. My God made a way for me when I couldn't make a way for myself. If there's a witness in the house, can somebody put their hands together and give God some praise? Hallelujah. Glory. God is good. He's great and greatly to be praised. There is no other God but him. Allah can't do this. Buddha can't do this. Jesus did it. When I was walking around full of hatred, I was walking around full of bitterness. And every time somebody said something to me, I felt like I had to say something back to them. Oh, glory to God. Every time somebody stepped on my toe, I felt like I had to cut off their whole legs. See how over we at? My wife told me that all the time. You over there. <laughs> and I had to realize, Ika, that's my daughter over there too. I had to realize, Ika, that the Bible said we don't render evil for evil. If somebody does something evil to me, you turn around and do something good to them. And you will mess that devil's mind right up, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I know there's a contract out on me. I know there's a contract out on you. But we've been delivered from the death decree. Now we have principalities and powers over every area of the world. All across America, there are demonic forces that rule the principalities of this particular area. Got it? So, so, so the, the, the ruler of the principalities has already stated to his lower underlings, I want you to take that man out. But guess what? My wife and I, we're riding in the van coming back from West Virginia and I'm here to tell you as a living witness when the rainstorm came and we're driving in the darkness of the night and we hit a puddle of water the van begins to hydroplane and we spun around out of control and we went over toward the guardrail and I saw, praise God, the cars coming up from behind us and I didn't have time to give a long prayer. All I could do was say, Jesus, hallelujah. That's why it's good to serve God. It's good to have some prayers in the bank because sometimes you ain't got time to have no long prayer. You better know. Jesus need to know who you are. So when you call on him, a connection is made instantly. I was so scared. I said, Jesus. And my wife looked up and she said, oh, this is going to hurt. And, <laughs> and I said, when I said, Jesus, Lord, I'm telling you, I experienced something I ain't never seen before. The van, we were at a standstill after we spun around. We were just standing still next to the guardrail. And as soon as we said, Jesus, the van went sideways, just like this. Down into the, uh, what do you call that, the midi, whatever, the middle of the highway. And it bounced up, and it landed on the other side of the highway in the right direction. Praise God. It didn't flip over. We didn't get hurt. We didn't hit anything. All them cars was on that road, going 80 and 90 miles an hour, none of them hit us. Contract was put on us. But we were delivered from the death decree. We met two men who came to help us. They were supposed to be men, but then we found out later they weren't. They came. Oh, y'all better listen. Be careful how you entertain strangers, whereby some have entertained angels unawaringly. These men came and helped us. And one of them said, do you know where you are? I said, no. He said, this spot, every year, at the same time, wow. somebody dies here. Amen. Didn't he say that? Every year, at the same time, a life is taken. That year, it was my turn to be on that, in that spot. And when death came to try to take us out, I believe the angels of the Lord came and said, hold up. Not him. Not them. And the, the man looked at me and he had looked, his eyes looked real strange, but I, I kind of ignored that part. He said, well, let me, let me fix your tire for you, because all we did, we got a flat tire. 
let me fix the tire for you. I said, oh, sir, I didn't want you to get muddy. Because it was raining, it was muddy. I didn't want him to get, you know, messed up. I said, I'll do it. He said, well, just let me hold the umbrella. I mean, this man just, he just had to do something. You ever seen somebody just, I got to help you. I don't know. I can't help it. I got to do something for you. That's how he was. So I said, okay, well, you hold the umbrella and I'll fix the tire. I ch changed the tire. And then when we got through, he said, go down this ramp, because the accident was right by the ramp. He said, go down this ramp, turn right, and about 100 yards on your left, going to be a gas station. It's going to be a gas station there. Didn't say it was one there. He said, it's going to be Amen. one there. Amen. See, you got to learn to listen carefully to what people say to you. Amen. We got to the gas station. This is a dark, rainy, muddy night. What that gas station look like? Shiny, bright, Shiny, bright, no bright clean, no mud, nowhere. Not even tire tracks. Mm. I was like, I told her, I said, I looked at that gas station, I said, honey, this gas station don't look like it belongs here. <laughs> you have just entered the twilight zone. <laughs> And I, I, I went on in the gas station, washed up, got all the dirt and the mud off of me. And I came back out and I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go to the band. He, he was still standing there, in the, sitting there in his pickup truck. I said, let me go over here and thank him. I want to get his name and address so I can send him a thank you card or something. So I said, sir, can I get your name and address and everything? I just want to send you a thank you card and let you know I really appreciate you and the other gentleman that, that came and, and helped us out. He looked at me with piercing eyes and he said you'll never find me but go ahead everything is all right he turned around drove down the same way we came from 100 yards later poof. that's a true story i'm not on crack i'm not on cocaine i don't do drugs trust me when i tell you i don't even drink so i'm telling you we saw that and as soon as he disappeared, then the word of the Lord came and said to me, I sent them to help you. Amen. I sent them to help you. Now listen, what does that mean? God watches over all of us. You're not here today because you were so careful. You're not here today because you're so good. You're not here today because you, you just had it all together. I never had it all together. To this day, I still don't have it all together. But I realized one thing, that God watches over us and he sends ministering angels to protect us when danger is present and you don't even know nothing about it. Praise God. When the bullets whizz past my head in Vietnam, let me tell you something. People died on my left side and on my right side. When the grenade exploded, praise God, before the grenade could explode, a white light stood there and and then the thing exploded. That kept me from getting killed. And God said, I protected you so that I could use you for this purpose at this time. Amen. Don't tell me what God can't do. You are delivered from the death decree the moment you come under the protection of the Holy Ghost. We have in the federal service the witness protection program. That means that when you testify against a criminal, they will change your identity and change your name and change your address and put you in a location where they think nobody will find you. But that program is, has some flaws in it. But I came to tell somebody when God says, I I am your shield and your buckler when God says I am your protector when God says I am with you and lo I'll be with you always even unto the end of the world hallelujah that means that God is going to protect you that means that God will remove the death decree that has been put on our lives it means that God will never fail he won't fail hallelujah I get excited sometimes, y'all excuse me getting excited, but I get excited when I see what God has done for me. Go ahead, go ahead. Come on now. Go ahead. I'm trying not to hoop and holler and scream too much, but I've got to tell y'all, if you've been where I've been, and you've seen some of the stuff I've seen, and you knew there was nobody but God that brought you out, you'd be shouting too. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
should have been dead at least two or three times I know about. The grenade in Vietnam, the car accident in West Virginia, and no telling the guy. Oh, I forgot one of the other one. In Kansas City, the guy pulled a gun on me. The 22 specials they had, Saturday night specials. He pulled a gun on me. Had it all sideways like this. Pulled the trigger. Gun clicked. The bullet didn't come out. But my foot sure went up. <laughs> he didn't get a second chance. He went click, I went shh. <laughs> and ran. <laughs> Praise God. But God protected me. All right, okay. I had a little fun now. Can you show all that work to Yeah. <laughs> tell it, Neil. Go on, tell it. It's all right, Neil. We be having a little fun at work. Yes, amen. The guys come at me, they, they think I'm so old, I can't move hardly. I had to fool one of them. <laughs> what you say, son? I, I, I may huff and puff, but I can still move. Amen. Yes. Yes. Praise God. God is so good. He's great and great. And let me tell you something. Yes, God will keep you in your older age if you honor him in your younger age. Yes, he will. You don't have to wait till you're 80 years old to start serving God. You serve God now. Remember that created in the days of thy youth. Yes. Huh? Amen. If I ever have. Yes, sir. Your latter shall be greater than your beginning. Amen. God is a keeper. Yes. When the death sentence is passed, when the death sentence has been decreed, I don't care who it comes from or what it comes from. Understand this. If God be with you, he's more than all of them Amen. that are against you. There's going to always be somebody against you. I don't care how nice you try to be. I don't care what you try to do to get along with people. There's going to always be somebody against you. But don't let them make you bitter. Amen. Let them make you better. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I had to tweak my attitude. Yeah, I had a bad attitude sometimes. Tweak, 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 tweak. I had to go in the bathroom sometimes and pray. I said, Lord Jesus, please let me calm down so I don't beat the snot out of this man. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you better come right now. We hope you've enjoyed our broadcast here on Gospel America. And if you are a pastor or a minister and you want to share the Word of God to people all around the world, we invite you to join us on the Gospel America Broadcast Network. Joining is free, there's no charge, and we'll give you more information about that. All you have to do is email us at gospelamerica at earthlink.net. We'll leave that email address up on the screen so you'll have time to write it down. Again, the email address is gospelamerica at earthlink.net. You can also call or text us at 203-410-6053. That number again is 203-410-6053. We want to hear from you and we'll be glad to respond to you. If you are a church or you have a special event taking place, certainly call or text us at this number and we'll be happy to feature you in a future Gospel America broadcast. Well, until next time, I'm Apostle Dr. Gary Jenkins. Thanks for being with us this week on Gospel America.